Hi everyone. Uh, today we will connect a bit more dots than yesterday because I have more time for this. So we will talk about many factors which are combined together creating a new risks uh, for us as a people, for the companies and for the governments. So we start with introduction. <laughs> so Actually, like, there were several stories which are initiated this research, but one of the stories was when I got a mobile advertisement with the movie, like, any, with a video of Elon Musk more than one year ago, advertising Ponzi scheme on my mobile phone. So I documented this and created the blog. But that's the thing which we spotted at the time. So, and where we now is when uh, well-known people like actors, politicians, or influencers complaining of their faces are being used and abused in the gray and black schemes, so it means like criminals and nearly, cri and nearly criminal schemes with strange advertisements and so on. So let's think what changed in recent years, what brought us uh, to this situation. So uh, does anybody attended this keynote talk? I think here in 2017, raise your hand. Okay. So the talk was about uh, public opinion manipulation in the internet and uh, tools, uh, underlying playbooks, wherever, which are used for this. So, and the social media role is increased for now. The fragmented thinking of people, which making conclusion uh, on the news caption without reading the news, it's also increasing because people don't have a time to read all the volume of information we have. Uh, together with that, uh, with, at the time, the tools to manage and generate bots were existing and we are just improving and improving. At the time, there was a smart bots which are uh, actually not behaving the same way as your neighbors and brothers. So for now, uh, with accessible AI technologies, those bots are smarter. Uh, there was another big thing here, actually, which looks really not connected, but it's somehow connected. So the business models of ransomware groups has been changed from extortion by accessibility of the or availability of the data when we encrypt the data to the double extortion model when victim loses the access to the data and the date and threatens but the, the exfiltrated data will be published. As a side effect of this, we see a lot of archives data dumps in the internet, which were published and containing uh, sensitive private information, which can re be reused by criminals. Uh, together with that, uh, we like to live in social media. We publish in a lot of photos, videos of ourselves. And the resolution of this media is enough to capture our biometric patterns. And I think for the last year, uh, deep fake and like faking the voice or cloning the voice accessibility has, has been grown and there are dedicated services on the underground to do this. And we, so the services are already existent for several years. So what else? Playbooks for public opinion manipulation were in place and this topic after, I think, U.S. elections in 2016 attract a lot of attention and uh, more and more materials are accessible to everybody uh, about uh, options to manipulate public opinion in the Internet. So what we get if we combine all those things? So like tools to generate and handle the bots, like personal information from extortion campaigns and from leaked documents, leaked databases, exposure of biometrics, 
uh, deep fake and voice cloning capabilities and playbooks for public opinion manipulation. Actually, the biggest thing here is capabilities to use to combine real identities with deep fakes, which give opportunity to create your digital twins without you knowing what this happened. So we cover it part of the things before, and you can uh, read or read our, our presentation or watch a video on the YouTube uh, from 2017. Uh, it's available if you look for my name and Hakal you. Uh, but in this talk, we will cover several things which are underlined on this picture. So it's real identities, it's deep fakes, biometrics, and what happened if we combine this with APT mindset or criminal mindset? So we walk one by one on those buckets or circles. So let's start with biometrics. So what is special about biometrics? You cannot reset the data as the password. So would you cut your finger one by one if your one of the fingerprints was leaked? Probably if it worth, but what you do with your face? Nice. So what's the question? So if you think about the variety of biometrics we leaked, Together with a lot of options for behavioral biometrics, we can easily lick voice, face, palm shape, palm geometry, fingerprints, eyes, or ear shape. And part of this is already widely used and on daily basis because majority of mobile devices have capabilities to recognize the face or laptops have fingerprint scanners, right? So where do we leak? Normally, it's like audio recordings, photos, and videos. And it's obvious, like in social media, while well, there are more things which we're not considering yet, like uh, new phones have capabilities to do 3D scans, so create 3D model of the face, which can be later printed on 3D printer. And uh, this on the development stage, but you already can see some libraries with 3D scanned faces. And also what is important, we are leaking with social media posts, we're leaking not just in images or videos or voice, but together with that, we live in the context about our habits, about our location and many other things. And the context can be used to search appropriate media to uh, generate uh, deep fakes or clone our voices. You can think like what the resolution is needed uh, for liquid biometric patterns and it's roughly for the strongest standards it's around 500 to 500 pictures for other standards it's even less for fingerprint and you can look into some photos, for example, from Instagram, you can zoom in a slightly pre-process and you can see uh, how fingerprint in this case was exposed in the Instagram post and you can see what resolution of this fingerprint is enough uh, to use it uh, in biometric systems. So the major question here is actually I want to highlight and increase, the environment, uh, increase awareness. Uh, where is a big difference between intended and unintended exposure. And for intended exposure, it's the use case when we have a program on discovery about what, or on our scientific TV channel, which explains what is fingerprint. So the person is aware about this exposure and the person should understand the risks of this exposure. But where are our cases, and majority of cases we have, we just don't even think that together with media posts, we're exposing our biometrics. And I will walk through briefly through several examples of this while you can look into the dedicated white paper on this topic where more use cases are covered. So European government website Contain, contain it at least one year ago, high resolution pictures, roughly up to 20, 20, at least 20 megapixel images of politicians. And in some contests, uh, were options to see 
the things which are expected together with the things that people doesn't expect, like a palm shape in this case. Uh, there are many other use cases of unintended exposure, exposure, like holding the object like a needle or shampoo in the advertisement together with showing this, exposing fingerprints, like showing how cool is my tattoo can lead to the same situation, or even uh, drinking a glass of wine and leaving the glass and posting the glass on social media can lead uh, to the exposure uh, of your fingerprints. So we did some experiment with hardware, uh, some experiments with hardware iris sensor. And I have a question for you, like when I did this experiment, I used a very famous tool from Microsoft to do this. So any ideas which tool I use it uh, to bypass some securities of hardware iris sensor? Anyone? Uh, other options? Other options? Defender? Yeah. A couple of answers was pretty close. Did you recognize this hacking tool on the right? So I use it embedded tools of Microsoft Word to draw a real nice looking eye. So and this eye as a pattern was enrolled to the system and the quality of the pattern was pretty high and even better but in some cases normal eye is enrolled. Uh, I also did experiment because hardware sensors have several stages. So first you need to force it to recognize an object as an eye and when it process the middle of the eye like an iris so to see if the pattern is good enough to enroll. So And I try to challenge the limits of this of so how far away you can go with an eye uh, made in uh, Microsoft Office to force the sensor to recognize this object as a human eye. So, and you can see pluses and minuses on this, but roughly like just a line above the circle was enough like to uh, interpret this painting as a human eye for the hardware iris sensor. So the next challenge was like for we've exposed pictures on the internet, can we enroll them and match uh, with hardware sensor? And uh, there was cases with success, some cases with slight favor, failure, so it was almost matched. Uh, but in general, it's possible and you can look into uh, our dedicated researchers on the topic, so uh, we just wanted to get a feeling are we on the right direction or not. So when I decided to continue this challenge, so I accidentally dropped the liquid on my mouse pad and tried to use hardware sensor to see how it will be recognized. So, and the blue light from the sensor uh, means that the sensor recognized the object as an eye. So that's the part where object is recognized as an eye, and then it makes a calculation of the quality of, of captured image. So, and the quality of image is not really bad, it's like total score 84. So it's normally suitable for enrollment and further processing. I did some other experiments uh, with this sensor. So with the picture from the internet, you can easily find it with nice lady. And uh, uh, I just tried to see if there is an option to sell to this device another eye. And it took some time, but you see the blue light is blinking and uh, the, the camera is actually ready for further steps. So there are more advanced sensors actually, which measure the face temperature, which measure like a liveness, which have a liveness detection function, like the eye is not static or whatever. 
But uh, the general lesson about uh, biometric sensors actually uh, is the same as I had in question. Uh, in 2006, I had a lightning talk at Eurocrypt conference about uh, mutual biometric authentication, but the problem is if you don't control the sensor, so you can do this, it's, it's really hard to use uh, mutual authentication with biometrics. So as long as you pass in the border control and there is an uh, officer near you which sees what you provide in your eye or wherever, this is reliable. As long as you're not controlling the sensor where way many options and attack surface is way higher. So you see how actually like biometric works. So let's see what criminals thinking about the situation. And if you look into underground forums where like above requests and demand uh, we have deep fake tools and similar technologies. And if you look into the timestamps, it's uh, 2022, 2021. So 2021 was about the time where it wasn't so big buzzword as now. So underground actors are aware and providing services to create deep fake, fake voice and many other things already. So what about digital, real digital identities? So you remember the bots, like non-existent persons which spread in information in the Twitter and wherever? So now those bots can be created with real human names, photos, behavior, and wherever. So we can easily collect uh, real identities and there is pretty big market for these on the underground, both Telegram channels and uh, on the forums or dedicated shops. And also uh, news confirming that uh, uh, ransomware attacks leading to the leak of the private information, which later can be also abused by criminals. So the question is actually what damage can be done when the data is exposed? So what happened if we apply criminal or APT mindset into the data and technology pillars we discussed before in the talk? So first of all, uh, let's compare how normal humans versus criminals approach the situation. So normal human just discussing whatever makeup while at the same time exposing their iris pattern. Uh, while criminals asking if I use this particular server, like to generate deep, service to generate deep fake, does the original my face goes to the server or it's processed locally? So we're thinking about upsec and we aware about the risks of exposure while we committing the crimes. So if this particular server process everything, service process everything on the server side with opportunity for law enforcement to request the data and find the real face of the criminal who committed a crime. So if I talk about uh, monetization models, uh, so we can think about like normal messenger scams can easily turn into virtual kidnapping. So business email compromise can easily turn into more convincing things like CEO call, calling CFO on the Zoom call and requesting to transfer a particular amount of money. So creation of accounts. So before accounts can be created like for the non-existing people and the bots. So now it's possible to create accounts for real people and also bypass security, additional security processes like uh, some financial institutions requesting to send a picture of you holding the ID wherever or even make a video call with personal or financial institution to approve uh, the creation of accounts. Accounts hijacking, it's also like Hijacking through tech support uh, in the cases if uh, on the back end voice recognition is used or this kind of verification is used, so it's way easier. 
blackmail like a lot of capabilities now to create to frame the evidence to put the person into the environment he never been and this a big option for the blackmail and blackmail is leveraged by both criminal and state sponsored actors uh, disinformation campaigns one thing is it's initiated by Twitter accounts, which are three years, three days long. And another thing, it's initiated by re people with real identities. So like videos of well-known people are more convincing comparing to random person claiming the same thing. Uh, hijacking of internet of things devices, like if car have Alexa account, you can open the car or even start engine from the car. So by replaying the voice of the owner to the Alexa, I probably it's open, it's possible to open the car near the office building of the owner because all the transactions are going through the internet. So there are many things which we not thought about now exist and scale in. Uh, who of you heard about virtual kidnapping? So people create in a situation when uh, the victim thinks it saves their lives or lives of their relatives. Relative thinks that victim is kidnapped and the criminals just monetize in this situation as a normal kidnapping while a uh, victim is not in danger. So we had a dedicated post on this, but it's something in which Deep fakes and like capabilities to to fake the voice are actually bringing into criminal world. Uh, another topic is bypassing verification through video conferences, and you see those discussions on the underground step by step guides how to bypass verification accounts for crypto wallets, uh, how to bypass verification of accounts uh, remotely open for the banks. And it's already working and there are services for this. So impersonation, uh, we already have the cases. So this is example of the case in China but where deep fakes were used and the person was arrested. Well, not everybody is arrested and you can see the scale. It's a six digit number of the financial impact in this particular case. For the online platforms, there are many, many things and services from the underground. Uh, those are the fresh ones, while uh, we're like the older ones. And those uh, things can be used for money laundry, which means if your identity was leaked to the internet, if your media was leaked to the internet, criminals can create accounts in the banks on your behalf and uh, do a money laundry. So uh, for crypto verification, uh, we covered this one year ago, and for now it's just scaled. For public opinion manipulation, uh, we saw several examples uh, on, at this conference already, so it's additional uh, capabilities. Uh, and it's additional capabilities uh, for the fraud uh, which can be done at scale and the entrance barrier for the people uh, are pretty low now. So one of the use cases I actually want to highlight here is a critical events. Uh, so with this, you can think about critical events as critical infrastructures which have a limited lifespan. So it could be elections, sport events, concerts, uh, demonstration, or even United Nations meeting. So use the right timing uh, right before or during these events can ruin uh, negotiations of the parties. This can affect uh, financial markets temporarily, but give opportunities, like opportunity window, which could be uh, from minutes till hours to monetize this by money or by profits for the different states. 
And we saw already uh, that some red flags related to this are happening. So this is a Euronews report about elections in Turkey. Uh, this is complain of the government employer about deep fakes, and we saw deep fakes of presidents already discussed at this event. So where variety of scenarios where combination of biometric exposure uh, with uh, deep fakes, with LLMs, and some other technology pillars, uh, uh, which criminals and state-sponsored actors can use. So I just summarized it this uh, on the one slide, but uh, you can look into the white paper uh, related to biometric exposure to get more details. So, and where we're getting actually, we're getting into the situation when every one of us have a good chance to get our digital twin on which we're not aware and which uh, conduct criminal activities. So, uh, it's time to rethink what you expose into the internet and uh, how you handle your biometrics data and together with that uh, biometrics authentication procedures. So not expose your fingerprints to everyone. If you use your fingerprints for financial transactions, use some other options to do this. So for now, the situation is really bad, uh, but not explode. It means all the technology pillars are in place. Uh, there is understanding of criminals how to monetize this while still there are some other options which are available for criminals like ransomware monetization for now, which for me it's going down, but at the same time it's just easy way to monetize. But as long as it stops, so we lose the capability to monetize the easy way, we already understand how to monetize it. Um, the new things and we will scale, uh, scale this. So with this, thank you very much. And if you have some questions, feel free to ask. So, and uh, here are the authors of this research, so I'm just one of them. On the left. So thank you for the awesome presentation. I have a question, like nowadays um, it's very convenient to give our fingerprint to like um, operating system so we can log into our personal computer. And for the enterprise um, and also other application, so biometric is used together with passkey. So my biometric is only saved within, for example, Microsoft operating system. The operating system is negotiating access with application I want to log in. Do you think this is secure or not? My opinion, uh, so biometrics alone can be used only in an environment where you fully control this, the sensor. And for me, there might be either additional options, like a pin code or whatever, which confirms this, or well, like zero trust approach where if you use biometrics, you cannot use it for a long time. You need to use our means to confirm your identity. So for me, it's okay. less and less secure as a single method. But if you combine this, it can improve security of our methods. Thank you. There was another question, I think. My question is, are you afraid of your digital twin? And if you are, why have you been filmed for the last 30 minutes? I think my digital twin is exposed enough, so I have no chance to avoid this. So my strategy is just to minimize the places where I use biometrics, probably. It's the same for politicians, it's the same for celebrities. It's the same for us if we're appearing at the stages of international events. 
So unfortunately, for some people, it's too late. Maybe I can do a face tattoo, but <laughs> let's see how it goes. Any no other questions? questions on the right side? At least one, because it's two zero. You're, you still have a chance. Okay, then. Let's say thank you to Vladimir.